Warning, listener discretion is advised. This episode contains sexual references throughout, a few expletives, and a lot of gruesome and horrific description, specifically depicting prostitution, child abuse, rape, and murder. Hi M&Ms, welcome back to another episode of Murder and More. As always, I am your host, Kira. Your parents are supposed to love you unconditionally. Your mother holds you in her stomach for nine months, ensuring you are ready to face the outside world before giving birth to you. She's supposed to nurture you, care for you, want the best in life for you. And your father likewise. He's supposed to love you, teach you how to ride your bike and how to swim. Your parents are supposed to support you through everything life throws at you and be there to celebrate the good times with you. Parents are supposed to set an example to their children, but two parents, Fred and Rose West, weren't at all nurturing or caring towards their children. In fact, they committed some of the worst acts a person could commit against a child. Okay, if you haven't listened to episode 10, you have to, otherwise this episode won't make any sense to you. So head back and listen to it now and I'll be here waiting for you. For those of you who have listened, here's just a quick recap. Fred West married Raina Costello on the 17th of November 1961. She was pregnant at the time with Charmaine. She fell pregnant again and gave birth to Anna Marie in July 1964. Fred quickly became overpowering and controlling over Raina, the nanny Isa McNeil and her friend Anne McFall. So they came up with a plot to escape. Raina and Isa went back up to Scotland, leaving 18-year-old Anne McFall to be Charmaine and Anna Marie's nanny. In July 1967, Anne, who was eight months pregnant with Fred's child, disappeared. Fred then met Rosemary Letts in early 1969 when she was just 15 years old the couple quickly got together and she moved in with Fred and took over care of the kids quickly Rose became very abusive towards the kids on the 17th of October 1970 Rose gave birth to Heather Ann someone in June 1971 Fred's stepdaughter Charmaine vanished. A few months later, her mother Raina also disappeared. Rose gave birth to May June and quickly fell into prostitution soon after. The couple also began sexually abusing Anna Marie and would later go on to abuse Heather and May. Heather went missing on the 19th of June, 1986. In 1992, the couple began sexually abusing their 13-year-old daughter, Louise. However, Louise was brave enough to tell her friend what had happened. The friend told her mother and the mother anonymously reported the assault to police. This sparked a huge investigation into Fred and Rose, with Anna Marie insisting that the majority of them had been sexually abused and that she was concerned for the welfare of Charmaine, Raina and Heather. The police searched 25 Cromwell Street and Fred quickly admitted to murdering his daughter before they found her body buried under the patio. We finished last week's episode 
finding out that Fred had confessed to a further six murders than the ones he'd already told police about and was willing to take them to where the bodies were buried. So between the 5th and 8th of March, police found all six bodies exactly where Fred had told them they would be. Each victim had been mutilated and each body showed evidence of them being severely sexually abused before their deaths. The second set of remains that were found was found with adhesive tape that had been wrapped around her face 12 times and there were plastic tubes inserted into her nostrils probably to help her breathe before her murder. The third set of remains found had a cloth wrapped around the skull, adhesive tape that had likely been used to gag the victim and her ankles and wrists were bound with rope. Despite Fred insisting that Rose had no involvement in the murders, investigators didn't believe him. Rose West was arrested on the 20th of April 1994 related to the rape of an 11 year old girl and the physical assault of an 8 year old boy, both dating back to the mid 70s. She was denied bail the following day and was asked in more detail about the murders, specifically those of her daughter Heather and of Linda Goff. On the 25th of April, Rose was charged with Linda's murder. By the 6th of May 1994, both Fred and Rose were both charged with five counts of murder, with Rose simply replying, I'm innocent, at the hearing and in all her interviews with police. But this wasn't the end. Fred confessed to even more murders, murders that happened before 25 Cromwell Street. Fred told police that he had murdered his first wife, Raina Castello, and his stepdaughter, Heather Ann, and he also confessed to knowing where the remains of Anne McFall were located, but denied murdering her. Fred again agreed to identify the location of each of the remains and all three were found between the 10th of April and the 7th of June. Fred was transferred to HMP Birmingham where he was placed on suicide watch. The couple were brought before Gloucester Magistrates Court on the 30th of June 1994, with Fred being charged with 11 counts of murder and Rose being charged with 9 counts. Immediately afterwards, Fred was re-arrested for the murder of Anne McFall and was formally charged with her murder on the 3rd of July. Fred became increasingly depressed whilst in prison, which was heightened by the fact that Rose was completely ignoring him and not responding to any of his letters. In response to this, Fred withdrew his previous statement about committing the murders alone and instead told police that Rose was indeed involved, as they had suspected, and even put the majority of the blame onto her. The suicide watch was relaxed, and on the 1st of January 1995, Fred was found hanging in his cell, having wrapped an improvised rope around his neck made out of a blanket, tying it to a door handle and dropping to his knees. A suicide note was found in the cell with a gravestone drawn at the bottom, saying, In loving memory, Fred West, Rose West, rest in peace where no shadow falls. In perfect peace he waits for Rose, his wife. In February, Rose pled not guilty to 10 charges of murder as Charmaine West's had been added after Fred's suicide. In their opening statement, the prosecution told the court that Fred and Rose were sex-obsessed, sadistic murderers. 
the men the bodies found at Cromwell Street as secrets more terrible than words can express. The last moments on earth were as objects of depravity of this woman and her husband. He pointed out to the court that Fred was in prison at the time of Charmaine's disappearance and what we now know was definitely her death, meaning it had to have been Rose who committed the murder. Prosecution witnesses included lodgers at Cromwell Street, relatives of the victims, Rose's mother and sister, Anna Marie, Caroline Owens, Catherine Halliday, who was a former lover of the couples, and someone we only know as Miss A, a woman who had been sexually assaulted by the couple when she was 14 in 1977, who described Rose as being the more aggressive of the two. Rose's defence emphasised that Fred had committed at least one murder before he met Rose, in a very similar fashion to how the rest of the girls had been murdered and claimed that the prosecution's case was largely circumstantial. Against her lawyer's advice, Rose testified where sometimes she seemed sad and remorseful, but other times upbeat and happy. She wept in front of the court whilst describing herself as a victim of child abuse and rape at the hands of her father and that she'd naively married a violent man, but joked when she discussed always being pregnant and laughed while describing one of the victim's grandfather glasses. Rose claimed that she'd never met any of the six victims found at 25 Cromwell Street and that she recalled very little detail about the assault of Caroline Owens. The prosecution showed Rose pictures of the victims buried in the cellar and her face turned red while she stuttered, No, sir. Rose claimed that her and Fred had lived separate lives at Cromwell Street but this was contradicted by lodgers and other visitors to the house. She also admitted that her relationship with her eldest daughter Heather was definitely strained and once again claimed that she was a lesbian who had physically and psychologically abused her siblings. Even though their relationship was strained, Rose told the court that she still loved her daughter and knew nothing about her murder. Janet Leach was Fred's appropriate adult, and she was the final person to testify against Rose. In her role as Fred's appropriate adult, Janet and Fred developed a bond, and she revealed that he'd actually started confiding in her just before his arrest. He told her that he and Rose had formed a pact whereby Fred would take full responsibility for the murders. However, that wasn't all Fred told Janet. Fred also told her that Rose was the one who murdered not only Charmaine but also Shirley Robinson. Fred claimed that he had dismembered and mutilated the victims' bodies, but that Rose had also taken part in the dismemberment of Shirley Robinson's body and even went as far as removing Shirley's unborn baby from her body after her murder. The final thing Janet told the court that Fred had confided in her that Rose had definitely played a major role in the other murders. The prosecution and defence gave their evidence for seven weeks before the jury retired to decide on the verdict. The judge reminded them that when two people commit a murder, the law considers them equally as guilty as each other, despite which of them did more during the act. On the 21st and 22nd of November, the jury returned with their verdicts. Rose West was found guilty on 10 counts of murder and was sentenced to life in prison, with the judge emphasising that she should never be allowed parole.
Rose began serving her sentence at HMP Bronzefield, where she was a Category A prisoner, meaning that she required high levels of security and that if she were ever to escape from prison, she would present a large and immediate danger to society. To this day, Rose still maintains that she is innocent and that she had no involvement in the murders. So let's have a proper look at exactly who Fred and Rose's victims were and when and how they were murdered. We already know about Anne McFall. Anne was friends with Isa McNeil, who was Fred and Raina's nanny. Isa and Raina managed to escape Fred, but it was too late for Anne. She was already in love with Fred and disappeared in July 1967. She was just 18 years old and approximately eight months pregnant with Fred's child at the time. Her remains were found in June 1994. Anne had been dismembered and many of her finger bones were missing, which is believed Fred kept as keepsakes. There is also the belief that Anne's unborn baby had been cut from her womb after her murder. Fred initially denied any involvement in Anne's murder, however later confided in a friend that he'd murdered her after an argument. However, this doesn't fit with the findings of her wrists being bound with a dressing gown cord. So, whilst he admitted to murdering her, I don't believe it was a simple stabbing after a row. I think it was a much more of a gruesome death. After all, if you simply stab someone in a fit of rage... Why go on to dismember them? I don't think you would, personally, but that's just me. We also know that the second victim was Charmaine West. Now, if you remember, Charmaine disappeared in June 1971, whilst Fred was in prison, so this means it had to have been Rose who committed her murder. We now know that Rose initially kept Charmaine's body in the coal cellar at their first home until Fred was released from prison and he buried it near the flat, claiming he hadn't dismembered her body. When an autopsy was performed when her remains were found in 1994, it appeared that her body had in fact been dismembered at the hip, although there is some speculation that this was actually just damage caused by Fred conducting building work at the property in 1976. Autopsy also revealed that just like Anne McFall, Charmaine's kneecap, fingers, wrist, toe and ankle bones were all missing, again thought to have been kept as keepsakes. There has never been a motive put forward as to why Charmaine was killed, however it's possible that Rose simply struggled looking after three kids at such a young age and saw this as the only way out to make her life a little bit easier. The next victim was Raina West, Fred's ex-wife. We know from the first episode that Raina visited Fred to express her concerns about the safety of her children and that she was never seen again. Raina is believed to have been strangled, potentially in the backseat of Fred's car when she was drunk. When her body was found, they found a short length of metal tubing buried with her, suggesting that she'd likely been restrained and sexually assaulted prior to her death. Her body was extensively dismembered and placed into plastic bags before being buried near some trees at Letterbox Field. The first victim that's believed to have been murdered by both Fred and Rose was Linda Goff. Linda was 19 years old and regularly visited 25 Cornwall Street where she was having affairs with two of the West's lodgers. On the 19th of April 1973, Linda herself became a lodger at the home. The following day, the other lodgers at the home and Linda's mother were told that Linda had been asked to leave the house because she'd hit one of the children. But we know now that Linda had endured a much more gruesome fate. When her dismembered remains were found buried under the cellar, her jaw had been wrapped in surgical tape, probably in an effort to stop her screaming, and long sections of string were found buried with her body. 
The likely scenario is that Linda had been suspended from holes that had been carved into the wooden beams in the cellar, which Fred had specifically created for suspending his victims' bodies, and that she died either from suffocation or strangulation. Linda was also missing some vertebrae, which helps form the spine, her kneecap and also some fingers. 15-year-old Caroline Cooper was abducted on the 10th of November 1973 whilst waiting for a bus to go back to the children's home she lived at after spending the evening with her boyfriend at the cinema. It's thought that Carol was dragged into Fred's car, had her mouth covered with tape and arms bound with cloth. She was then driven back to 25 Cromwell Street where she was suspended from the wooden beams in the cellar before being abused and murdered. As with Linda, Carol had died as a result of either strangulation or suffocation and her body was dismembered and buried in the cellar. On the 27th of December 1973, 21-year-old Exeter University student Lucy Partington disappeared also whilst waiting for a bus after spending Christmas with family and friends in Cheltenham. There is strong evidence to suggest that Lucy may have actually been kept alive until about a week after her disappearance, as Fred went to A&E at Gloucester Hospital on the 3rd of January 1974 to get a deep laceration looked at. It's thought that this laceration was caused by the dismemberment of Lucy's body. Lucy's remains were found buried in the cellar of 25 Cromwell Street on the 4th of March 1994, along with a knife that is believed to have been used to dismember her body. Therese Siegenthaler was a 21-year-old sociology student at Greenwich Community College in London when she disappeared on the 16th of April 1974. She was abducted as she hitchhiked from London to Holyhead in Ireland. Her family in Switzerland reported her missing to Scotland Yard when they couldn't get in contact with Therese just after Easter. The Metropolitan Police investigated Therese's disappearance for years with no success. Her remains were found buried in the cellar at 25 Cornwall Street on the 5th of March 1994. Now, I can't find anything to tell me how Therese died, but I have to assume she was also suspended from the wooden beams in the cellar and died of strangulation or suffocation before being dismembered and buried. But that's just my assumption. 15-year-old Shirley Hubbard was the West's next victim. She went missing on the 15th of November 1974 from a bus stop in Droitwich, Worcestershire after a work experience course. Shirley's remains were also found buried in the cellar of 25 Cromwell Street. Her head had been completely covered in tape and there was a small rubber tube inserted into her nasal cavity to allow her to breathe. Juanita Mott was 18 years old when she disappeared on the 12th of April 1975. Juanita was actually known to the Wests, having been a former lodger at 25 Gromwell Street, but she was living with a friend at the time of her disappearance. Juanita was abducted while hitchhiking from her home to Gloucester, with plans to return home the following day. While Juanita was never officially reported missing to police, her family did contact the Missing Persons Bureau and the media, where her details were included in missing persons articles, magazines and newspapers. Juanita's remains were found on the 6th of March 1994 in the cellar of 25 Cromwell Street. Again, I have no details about her cause of death, but I have to assume she met a very similar fate to the other victims. For an unknown reason, the Wests then took a break before 18-year-old Shirley Robinson disappeared on the 10th of May 1978. Shirley was a former lodger at 25 Cromwell Street and had engaged in casual sex with both Fred and Rose. When Shirley disappeared, she was actually eight months pregnant with Fred's child and her baby was due on the 11th of June, just a month after she went missing. 
It's believed that there was no sexual motive behind Shirley's murder. She simply got in the way and threatened the stability of Fred and Rose's relationship. Fred had actually originally planned on selling Shirley's baby to a couple, but I assume he didn't. There's no more information about that. Again, I am unclear as to how Shirley was murdered, but as there was no sexual motive, a part of me assumes her fate may not have been as brutal as some of the other victims, but again, I don't know. Shirley's remains were also found on the 28th of February 1994 under the garden patio of 25 Cromwell Street. A little over a year later, on the 5th of August 1979, 16-year-old Alison Chambers became the couple's next victim. Alison had been placed into foster care but regularly ran away from the home she lived in and worked at a solicitor's firm. Alison was reported as missing to the Missing Persons Bureau and initially to police as an absconder from care. Alison became acquainted with Fred and Rose in the middle of 1979 where, as Fred recounted to his solicitor, she had died as a result of Rose becoming too vicious with her. Alison's dismembered remains were the second set to be found, buried under the garden of 25 Cromwell Street, which was also missing several bones and was found with a leather belt looped around her head, beneath her jaw and tied at the top of her head, I assume again in an effort to stop her from making any noise. Alison's was the final murder where police could establish a sexual motive. The next victim of the Wests was Fred and Rose's own daughter, Heather Ann. When her elder sister, Anna Marie, ran away from home, Heather and her sister May became the focus of Fred's sexual attention. It's thought that the motive of Heather's murder was because she presented a threat to Fred and Rose. She was planning on leaving home and she had already divulged information of what went on at 25 Cromwell Street to her classmates. Rose told a neighbour that Heather had left after the pair had a row and the couple told their children that Heather had left for a job in London. However, they later changed their story telling people that Heather had run away with a lesbian lover. As we already know, Fred would later threaten the children that he would bury them under the patio just like Heather if they ever misbehaved. Heather's remains were the first to be found under the garden patio of 25 Cromwell Street. Discovered with her remains were lengths of rope, which suggested that she had been restrained and probably subjected to a sexual assault before her murder. Heather's body had been dismembered with a large serrated knife and buried in a hole in the garden that Fred had his son dig for him under the pretense of installing a fish pond. The investigation into Heather's disappearance in 1994 is what led to the finding of her body and the unravelling of the horrors that had taken place at 25 Cromwell Street. So, they were all the confirmed victims of Fred and Rose West. However, there were years where the couple are not known to have committed any murders, and honestly, I can't believe that a couple that sadistic would just stop murdering for years on end. And I'm not the only one who thinks this. Fred was so calm during all of his interviews with police that they brought in a criminal psychologist to evaluate his state of mind. The psychologist, Paul Britton, said that Fred's overly calm manner was probably due to the fact that he had committed so many crimes over such a long period of time that he'd become indifferent to the sick acts of sexual abuse, torture, mutilation and murder. Paul Britton also told police that someone with this kind of nature may offend less frequently, but it's very rare that they stop altogether. There were no known murders between 1975 and 1978, or in the eight years after Heather's death and before they were arrested in 1994. Now, there are theories around why there are such large gaps in the West's murders. Many believe that the West started befriending teenagers from local care homes in the mid-1970s who they either sexually abused or encouraged to prostitute themselves out, 
at 25 Cromwell Street or probably a bit of both and that this satisfied the couple's fetishes and needs for a while. 15-year-old Mary Bassthome went missing in 1968, however nobody has ever been found in the search for her and it's thought that Mary may have fallen victim to Fred West. Fred's son Stephen believes Mary did fall victim to Fred, mainly because he openly boasted about committing her murder when he was on remand, but police have never been able to link him to her disappearance due to a lack of evidence. During formal questioning, Fred actually disclosed to police that he'd in fact murdered 30 people, meaning if this was true, there were 18 sets of remains out there that hadn't yet been discovered. So could Mary be one of them? I think only Fred knew the answer to that. Mary disappeared before he and Rose got together, so whatever answers Fred may hold, he took them with him to his grave. There were also four young girls in Glasgow, all of who looked very similar to Fred's victims, who all went missing while Fred was living there with Raina. One of the girls, Margaret McAvoy, was actually known to Fred, so I can't see this being a far-fetched theory. Fred rented an allotment opposite to the house he lived in with Raina, However, he only ever used a small portion of it, with the rest, as he told his neighbours, being used for something special, which, now I know what we know, freaks me the hell out. Unfortunately, by 1994, police were unable to find out if there were indeed bodies buried in the allotment, as it had been since built over and is now a motorway. Which again, oh, it just freaks me out. Thousands of people drive along motorways every day. In Glasgow, there may very well be people driving along a certain part of M8, unknowingly driving over where someone was buried all those years ago. And it's likely those victims will never be found. Don't forget to head over to Apple Podcasts to leave a rating and review, and Patreon to consider becoming a patron of Murder and More. To interact with us, you can follow us on Twitter and Tumblr at Murder and More, Instagram at Murder and More Pod, and Facebook at Murder and More Podcast. Have a great week, and I'll see you all next week for another episode.